السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عيدكم مبارك وكل عام وأنتم بخير May Allah bless you all and may we all as an ummah have an amazing day We started off this morning with the takbir We continued with the salah of Eid and the khutbah And we proceeded to our homes where we had a little bit to eat And we thank Allah that we're back in the masjid. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah Almighty grants us favor. And Allah Almighty is the one who blesses. He's the owner of blessings. So when you ask, ask Allah for favor. And when you have a day where Allah has blessed you and granted you the goodness, remember not to displease Allah on a day like this. We need to revisit the day of Eid by looking at it from an angle of obedience and sin. What should be? Allah gives you the day of Eid as a result of your perpetual obedience over a long term. How can you exit it with the sin on the day of rejoicing the act of worship? That's why whenever we see the moon at the end of Ramadan, people normally, normally say there's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is the moon has been sighted. The bad news is shaitan is released. We hear that every year. Now, you actually realize it when on the day of Eid, you see what people do and you realize indeed shaitan is out straight because people forget Allah. They don't do salah. They don't dress in a way, a simple thing as a dress code in a way that they know the one whom they claim to worship would not be happy about. People start planning, hey, I stayed away from adultery for 30 days. Today is Eid. It's a fact. This is happening in our midst. What was the point? Do you know a sign of your accepted Ramadan is that when you exit from it, you feel the change in your life. I said that in this masjid, if you recall last week. A sign of your Ramadan having been accepted is that when you come out of it, your life has changed in one way or another. Your bad habits quit or at least reduced if it's a minor sin and if it's a major sin completely eradicated. And even if it's minor, you can eradicate it. A minor thing such as, for example, let me not give examples because you might belittle it, right? You know what's a bad habit. My brothers and sisters, we rejoice on a day like this. This morning I delivered the Eid khutbah in a different masjid. But the point raised was, in the midst of oppression that we are witnessing across the globe, more so in Palestine, what's going on right now is absolutely unacceptable. We want to see solution. We want to see goodness, peace, calmness. And we would like to be able to visit Masjid Al-Aqsa and to fulfill at least Salah in it, being the third holiest Masjid on earth for the Muslims. But if you were to look at the same Masjid, They had their Eid yesterday. They had their balloons and they were happy. They had all their, their party. They had food and drink and so on. They were also in the midst of almost a war zone. Do you know why they had to do that? Because it was the instruction of Allah. If it was not for the instruction of Allah, they would never do it. When you get up on the day of Eid, you are supposed to be wearing good clothing. You're supposed to be having an extra salah. You're aware of that. Imagine when Allah gives us a day of happiness of any nature. He wants us to do some acts of worship more than usual. So if you're really happy, you got to do something extra in terms of worship. Whereas those who don't believe, when they're very happy, what do they do? They drink it away. They pub it. They club it. And what else do they do? They forget themselves. They fulfill their desires. They have a moment of which later they shall regret for a lifetime. That to them is rejoicing. You ask the brother or the sister, what happened? They say, hey, I regret it. You know, we were just partying because it was my birthday. 
And in that I became intoxicated and in that I don't know what I was doing and in that this is what happened. Muslims, that cannot be the case. No ways, no chance. A day of happiness, engage in salah, engage in dua. Look at this day of happiness. There is an extra salah known as Salatul Eid. Look at the day when you get married. There is an extra khutbah. You got to listen to a sermon. The imam has to say words that will be of advice to you. Look at the day of Jumu'ah today. We have an extra khutbah. You have to come to the masjid and listen to it. This is the best day of the week, right? Jumu'ah is a blessed day. Like people say, Ramadan Mubarak, Jumu'ah Mubarak, and Eid Mubarak. They're all from the Mubarak family, right? You need to understand one thing. The Islamic greeting is Assalamu Alaikum. Even on Eid day, don't abandon the Sunnah. What is the Sunnah? The Sunnah greeting mentioned in the Quran, the one Allah will use to greet us when we enter Jannah, what is it? Assalamu alaikum and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No matter what day it is, no matter what occasion it is, do not replace this. Don't replace it. Once you've said it, assalamu alaikum, my brother, he will answer you, wa alaikum as salam. Then I can say, Eid Mubarak. You see what I did? I greet it for Eid, but only after the salam. Because the salam is an ibadah, it's an act of worship. Don't kill it on the day of Eid. Don't kill it on a Friday. Don't kill it just because Ramadan has started. Some people don't know this. That's why we're talking about it today. There's no harm in saying Eid Mubarak for as long as you don't consider it the initial Islamic greeting. Because that is only assalamu alaikum. Do you follow the point? And inshallah, we can educate and we can conscientize and we can remember. Be it a Friday. I've come across people on a Friday, they think with a good heart that on a Friday you don't say assalamu alaikum, you just say Juma Mubarak. That's it. And on, a, on an Eid day, you don't say assalamu alaikum, you say Eid Mubarak. It replaces the salam. Not at all. Say it by all means, but only after the salam because that's the dua. Peace be upon you. In fact, you need greater peace on the day of Eid. May Allah bless all of us. May Allah grant us a day when we can reconcile our differences with one another, especially within our families. From amongst us, there are those who have problems and issues within their own brothers and sisters. My beloved brothers and sisters, try to solve the problem today. Try to resolve it. Make dua. Have a big heart. Cleanse. Let it go. Today is a day of Eid. You will have greater reason to rejoice when you made an effort to solve a matter. If it did not solve after you tried it, no harm. You deserve the medal because you tried. Right? Look at the children of uh, Adam alayhi salam. The one tells the other one, I'm jealous of you. <laughs> Straight. I'm going to kill you. It's in the Quran. He told his brother, straight up, I'm going to kill you. Because of something Allah blessed him with that he did not bless this one here with. So this one says, if you are going to stretch your hand in order to strike me, to kill me, I want you to know I'm your brother. I'm not going to stretch my hand to harm you at all because I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. The reward was with the one who didn't stretch his hand. May Allah grant us ease. Now obviously when you're attacked by whoever, you have a right to defend, don't you? You don't just stand back and say, I am one of the children of Adam. It's okay, go ahead, shoot. You don't do that. Subhanallah. You probably shoot back if you can. I see some of the brothers here who are supposedly experts. You just look at them and you can tell this guy is moving around. Well, kitted, mashallah. <laughs> Allah bless us. May Allah protect our iman in an even greater way than he would protect our bodies. Now, my brothers, my sisters, today the time is less. The reason is we have large crowds of people and we have to have more than one Jumu'ah. Do you agree? So don't you think it would be good for us to close up just now and to make space for the others? So 
in closing, and, and I haven't ended, I still got a part two, Brother Zain, you better know, I'm coming back to the masjid, inshallah, we'll meet back at three o'clock. What do you guys say? Amen. Allahu Akbar, I thought you would say, we're going to have tea at home or something. <laughs> no, it's a day of Eid. I think the message is loud and clear, that we really need to try and resolve our matters within our homes, try, even in community, society, extend an arm. And if someone has extended an arm to you, Try to let go, to release, to embrace, you know, at least to make peace. Even if you haven't uh, become friends once again, but at least now there's peace. We are mu'minin, we need that peace. And I just want to end off by telling you why. My brothers and sisters, what has happened in Palestine would never have happened if the ummah was united. Impossibility. It can only happen because we point at each other. We are disunited. We look for small differences. This man's mustache is a little bit too short. That's it. And there are things like this. This man's, for example, he's kufi. It's not made by the right face man. Yes. And we hate each other for that reason in the ummah. We are laughing, but it's true. You look at what someone looks like and you've already developed a perception of the person. Just by looking at them, they might be a friend of Allah. Who are you? You're just a judger. You think you're a judger. Sitting back and pointing fingers. That's why Palestine is happening. If we were united, like I said, it would never have happened because the leaders that we have would have stood up long back and said, hey, this is a red line. It's a no-go area. But they couldn't. There's no red line. Today, the ummah can be wiped out only because we ourselves would allow it to be wiped out. We are excited when someone is being harmed just because he deserves it. That's what we say. That one deserves it. But do you know it's coming to you? Ah, it won't come. Then when it comes, the others are saying you deserved it too. So who helped who? When the Prophet said the ummah is supposed to be like one body. Come on. That's why I say make amends. Stand up for each other. We do it well in Bosmont because I know it's one of the safer areas. People used to not say that before. Now they have to admit because you know what? There's a brotherhood here. And you know what? Try messing with a neighborhood watch here. Whoa. You'll be sorted. Subhanallah. I think if I said anything out of turn, four guys would stand up right here. One from there, one from there because I know how they operate here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So I ask Allah really to grant us that unity so that we can be an ummah. You will have differences, it's okay. My, these differences are fine. For as long as you are within la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you're, you're okay, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's learn to, to love one another, to stand up for the ummah. And don't ever play the blame game. Because the blame game is one game that makes us defeat the purpose of our existence. Because I'm going to say, you're supposed to be doing that. You're not doing it. And he says, well, he's supposed to be doing it. And that one's supposed to be doing it. And this one's supposed to be doing it. And so on. I actually know of people who sit on social media and they make big, big posts. And they think that that solves the problem of the ummah completely. That might be some important role. I don't deny that. But that's not the solution. The solution is for all of us to feel for each other. Genuinely, don't start a new war while arguing about who should extinguish the existing war. To follow what I'm saying. We are fighting who should extinguish that war. The answer to that question has created a new war. That's where we're going wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us.